Week 14 is behind us. Week 15 is here. It is now. We are on the stretch run, the last little bit of the DFS season, and we are the DFS early look. I, of course, am Thomas Tipple. Joining me, as always, is the DFS man himself. It is Jake Tribute giving you the earliest look that you can possibly have with his article. That will be out this week. You're not going to want to miss it if you have not been going and reading and then going back and watching this video you're already behind you're going to want to chip chop and get in with it millie maker this week had a just a bunch of surprises we just talked about it the minnesota defense came in clutch the much maligned austin eckler came through let's find some guys this week that you think have a real shot at being the best values for these top tier high scoring teams. We're going to kick it off with a guy who started off real hot this last week, cooled off a little bit, pulled it through in the end, but let's talk about Justin Fields. Obviously the quarterback of Chicago bears draft King 7,000. That's QB six FanDuel 7,900 QB six. What do you have on tap versus Cleveland this week? Yeah. So Justin Fields has averaged 28.7 DraftKings fantasy points per game over his last four games against opponents not named the Minnesota Vikings. He's put up no less than 46 rushing yards in five straight games. And I really wouldn't expect that to change in week 15 against a Browns defense that ranks top four in man coverage usage. Why does that matter? Well, Man coverage means that coverage players have their back turned to the quarterback while they're guarding their man one on one. Justin Fields averages 23.4 DraftKings fantasy points per game and 8.2 rushing fantasy points per game against teams that rank top 12 in man coverage usage usage this season. 23.4 DraftKings fantasy points per game is 5% better than Dak Prescott's season average, and Dak Prescott costs 14% more based on DraftKings salary. So I'd expect Fields to once again be one of the chalkiest players of the week or quarterbacks of the week against the Browns defense that's been an above average schedule adjusted matchup for opposing quarterbacks on the ground. And like I said, are very man heavy. Um, you know, Fields started the season off at 7,700 on DK. 7,000 is just too cheap for a quarterback who's playing, you know, quite well over the last five weeks against teams not named the Minnesota Vikings. I wonder what it is against the Vikings that they just, they have his number, they have something on it. But like you said, it is not them this week. So he's definitely should be in consideration. Let's go with the number two surprisingly good game against the Baltimore Ravens defense. I don't think anybody expected this game to for them both to come out. LA came out just pounding the ball on the opening drive and Baltimore just wanted to throw it all game. And then obviously Stafford picked it up towards the end. What we like to see a lot of throws inside the 20. We like that. Let's talk about Matthew Stafford. They get the Commanders, DraftKings 6,000, FanDuel 7,200, both QB 11 at their respected websites. What do you love about Stafford this week? Yeah, so Stafford, you know, he hasn't been a very popular DFS option recently, you know, largely because he had that UCL injury earlier in the season, but it's safe to say he's put those injury concerns to rest after 10 passing touchdowns and 23.7 DraftKings fantasy points per game over his last three games with Stafford once again finding his groove. Why wouldn't we want to play him against the Washington Commanders, who are by far the league's worst pass defense right now? The Commanders rank as the single softest schedule adjusted matchup for opposing passers, and they've allowed 22 or more DraftKings points to Tommy DeVito, Desmond Ritter, and Geno Smith, alongside games of 30 or more DraftKings points to Dak Prescott, Justin Fields, and Geno Smith as well. (laughs) So targeting quarterbacks against this Washington defense has been a print fest all year, and that should continue in Week 15 with a healthy Matthew Stafford playing some of his best ball of the season. It's almost like when you trade two of your best pass rushers in the season, your defense gets worse and you have to take advantage of that down the stretch. They're they're glaring at this point. Let's switch to the most important position in my opinion, that is the running back position. Obviously, we wanted this man to score last week. His odds were minus 336. Uh, if you're in Canada, you're paying on bet 365. It was minus 336 to score was his anytime touchdown prop bet. It was insane. Didn't hit, but he did have still a big game. That's Christian McCaffrey, 9,300 on DraftKings. The RB1, as he should be, FanDuel, uh, 10,500 
RB1 as he should be. Let's talk about it. It's sad that when you say that a down game is 152 yards, but let's let, let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, that's the crazy thing was, you know, McCaffrey wasn't winning you any tournaments in week 14. He had a bad game, but that still meant 152 yards from scrimmage and 19.3 DraftKings fantasy points. This was just the third time this season he failed to crest 20 DraftKings points. We know he offers the best floor and ceiling of any running back in football, especially in a San Francisco offense that's looked unstoppable recently. And his floor and ceiling can only improve against an Arizona defense that's been a total disaster this season. The Cardinals are the second softest schedule adjusted matchup for opposing running backs. And the last time these teams played in week four, Christian McCaffrey scored 51.7 DraftKings points, the 13th highest fantasy score by a running back since 2010. If you're paying up for running back this week, hard to make a case for anyone other than Christian McCaffrey. No, he's just a lock. He's a lock every week. He has to be a lock play, in my opinion. You f- just find a way. Go to fantasypoints.com, use the DFS optimizer, and make sure to lock in Christian McCaffrey. Another running back who, big play in the passing game, the rest of it may be left a little bit to be desired in this game against a very beatable matchup on the ground in Kansas City, usually. We're going to talk about James Cook. He plays the Dallas Cowboys this week. DraftKings 6,300 RB14. FanDuel 7,200 RB11. A little bit higher on FanDuel. Let's talk about James Cook versus Dallas. Yeah, so the Bills have turned notably more run heavy since uh, offense coordinator Joe Brady took over, going from a top five pass rate over expectation to bottom 10 over the last four weeks. And that has been a minor boost for James Cook. But the bigger change for Cook is the ma- is his massive increase in goal line usage. Since week 10, Cook has earned a 62% snap share and 58% of backfield usage inside the 10 for Buffalo. In James Cook's first, first nine games, he only managed a 29% snap share and 21% of backfield usage inside the 10. So his goal line role has more than doubled since the offensive coordinator change. And his DraftKings price hasn't quite followed. His matchup with Dallas this week is pretty tough. Dallas is a bottom four schedule adjusted matchup for opposing running backs. But I do think Cook makes up for it with his newfound touchdown equity in what is clearly the best offensive environment of the slate, just looking at Vegas lines early in the week. Yeah, he's, again, good stretch run at the beginning of the year, kind of a lull period, huge play last week. So the hope is there with James Cook. It it still it still exists, and his price is really good. Let's talk about another play that I was very surprised when we were talking before we hit the record button about this Canadian icon, this growing legend here north of the border, Chuba Hubbard, really showing how bad Miles Sanders was and had been because he has been an absolute unit for Carolina when they've needed him. Only 5,600, which seems a little behind given his recent production over at DraftKings. That, uh, it's RB19. FanDuel has him a little bit higher, 6,700. That's RB14, big gap. Again, we talk about how FanDuel is more fantasy reactive than what DraftKings would be, so an opportunity here. Yeah, absolutely. So Panthers offensive coordinator Thomas Brown has only called plays in five games this year, but Chuba Hubbard has averaged 15 expected fantasy points per game in those contests. That would be RB12 over the full season. Over the last four weeks, Carolina has been right there as the most run-heavy team in the NFL by pass rate over expectation. And Chuba Hubbard has averaged 18 carries per game and 73 rushing yards per game while scoring over 20 DraftKings points twice during that run-heavy stretch. Right now, Hubbard has a far more valuable role than his current price implies. And his Week 15 matchup with Atlanta is mostly a neutral one, um, but... And well, and you might think, you know, the spread's three points. What if Atlanta gets out to a big lead? What if Hubbard, who's mostly reliant on rushing volume, gets game scripted out? Well, last week they lost to New Orleans by 22 points. Chuba Hubbard still earned 23 carries in that game. Carolina, they're just remarkably committed to the run right now. And, you know, any player who's 5,600 on DraftKings who has a pretty clear path to 20 carries is an appealing play to me. Yeah, he's it's part of those reasons where I've mentioned on this program a couple of times that you have to remove your fantasy brain if you are not a DFS mainstay. You hear the name Chuba Hubbard and you might get icked out 
but he is an absolute smash with this volume. Volume drives fantasy. We need that. He has it, and he is producing with it. Let's head over to wide receiver, an absolute rookie stud, a must-play Puka Nakua. Again, you mentioned Stafford, Washington, and the Rams. We've talked about the matchup. This just makes so much sense. Probably a little bit underpriced in my opinion. But let's talk DraftKings 7,300. That's wide receiver 8. FanDuel 8,000. Wide receiver 7. Let's talk Puka Nakua. Yeah, so Nakua is on pace to tie Jamar Chase's modern rookie receiving record. Insane. And he's clearly underpriced on this slate. He's fifth among slate eligible wide receivers in DraftKings fantasy points per game and fourth in expected fantasy points per game, despite, you know, as you noted, Thomas, being priced as the wide receiver eight by DraftKings salary, wide receiver seven by FanDuel salary. But the real reason we want to play him this week is because of this outstanding matchup. Like I touched on with Matthew Stafford, the Washington Commanders are the third softest schedule adjusted matchup for opposing outside wide receivers, and they've allowed a league leading 2.4 yards per hour run to opposing pass catchers lined up outside. So far this season, 11 different players have gone over 90 receiving yards against Washington, and 10 of those players ran the majority of their routes on the outside. Nakua should be able to do whatever he wants in this spot, and it's only made more, more appealing by the overall game environment, which features the second highest total on the slate. This could be the cheapest 45-point stack that you're going to see this week. This is a legitimate blow-up opportunity for the Rams, and we should be hammering it home. I think you've made a phenomenal point for that. Rasheed Rice is a player getting a little bit more run here with Kansas City. As you mentioned before we hit record, they're going to be mad. It could be easy to find a reason to be down on the KC offense, but I think you make a good point here. Only 6,100 wide receiver 15 on DraftKings, 6,500 over on FanDuel. So FanDuel a little further behind here at wide receiver 19. Let's talk about the matchup that Rishi Rice is looking at this weekend. Yeah, so I think it's important to note before we talk about the matchup that Rasheed Rice is finally a full-time player. He had a career-high 82% route share on Sunday. He's run a route on over 60% of the team's dropbacks in three straight games. That's led to 17.1 expected fantasy points per game and 20.4 actual fantasy points per game. Marks that rank 11th and 4th among all wide receivers over the full season. So that presents clear value relative to his DFS salaries on both sides. On a per route basis, Rasheed Rice is earning targets at a higher rate than Travis Kelsey, CeeDee Lamb, and Mike Evans. And now that he's a full-time player, we can figure he will be a top 10 fantasy asset at wide receiver for the rest of the season, assuming, of course, that his target earning ability remains unchanged. And like I said, that prevents clear value, presents clear value relative to his current DFS salaries. This week, he draws a New England defense that's largely re been regarded as a tough pass defense, but they're also one of the three softest schedule adjusted matchups for opposing wide receivers since week seven. So this defense is a lot softer um, than what you may expect it to be, at least as of late. And I'd expect Rasheed Rice to take advantage of that because, man, this guy just gets open. He does. He is showing every bit of explosiveness. He's just been an absolute steal. They found a really good wide receiver for them. They just need maybe that, that little extra, maybe just not using Kadarius Tony. And I think this offense might flourish a little bit. A bunch of injuries here for Houston have opened the door for one of Scott Barrett's previous favorite wide receiver, a cashing points favorite wide receiver cashing points. That's every Friday. You're going to want to be tapped into that, but only 5,000 does not reflect how good Noah Brown was the last time he was summoned with the bat signal in Houston. 5,000 at wide receiver, 25 over on DraftKings, 6,500 over on FanDuel, wide receiver, 19. Let's talk about Noah Brown. Yeah, so Tank Dell's on injured reserve, and Nico Collins is dealing with a calf injury that prevented him from finishing Houston's Week 14 game against the New York Jets. That leaves Noah Brown as the presumptive wide receiver one in the league's second most productive passing attack by passing yards per game. So, you know, Noah Brown hasn't done anything for two straight games. But prior to that, 
Brown led Houston's receivers in receiving yards in each of his last three games, which happened to be his only three fully healthy games this season. Of course, you know, prior to the last couple weeks and the matchup with Tennessee this week really couldn't be much better. I already noted Puka Nakua is having the best matchup possible. Well, the second best possible matchup, at least right now, are the Tennessee Titans. They've been the second softest schedule adjusted matchup for opposing wide receivers since week seven. Brown could see his best volume of the year, given all these injuries and the perfect matchup. And that should make him one of the top overall values at any position in week 15. I think he's going to absolutely smash this week. I think you've nailed this one on the head. He is going to be the last member of every lineup that I place this week. He's going to be the cheap fill-in that we're looking for. I believe it. Let's talk about tight end. And I, and I love that you picked this tight end because it gives me the opportunity to mention Baltimore Ravens legend, the Italian stallion, the eyebrows himself, Joe Flacco, who's absolutely reviving the Cleveland Browns offense. Didn't think we'd say that in 2023, but here we are. I see no reason why they're not playing Joe Flacco, regardless of the news that he went back to the taxi squad. That would just be a bonehead move. And if Flacco starts, David Njoku, DraftKings tight end eight at 4,700. FanDuel's tight end five at 6,200 should absolutely smash this week. Let's talk Njoku. Yeah, so since week 10, David Njoku is the tight end one by expected fantasy points per game, the tight end six by first read target share, the tight end six by DraftKings fantasy points per game, and the tight end five by receiving yards per game. So that's, you know, far better usage than his tight end eight salary implies. His floor and ceiling have both been outstanding over this recent stretch. He's posted the ninth best fantasy performance by any tight end this season this past Sunday. And he's earned at least eight targets and at least 11.8 DraftKings fantasy points in four of his last five games. Chicago is an above average matchup for opposing tight ends. But, and this is fairly important, Njoku does lead the Browns pass catchers in red zone usage with Joe Flacco under center. So, you know, he could have another ceiling performance this week with a multi-touchdown game in a slightly above average matchup, as I noted. Yeah, he's, again, with Flacco, he's going to smash. He's just been unbelievable with the volume, the athleticism. He finally looks like the guy that everyone's been waiting for for so many years, but we need Flacco to make this happen he is the key to unlocking this man's talent and he's done so so let's keep this up for the stretch that is week 15 of the dfs early look jake when does the article come out what do you have in store for the dfs folks this week at fantasypoints.com yeah so the dfs early look is always live on the site by noon on tuesdays i also will have dfs study hall that's sort of my big midweek overview of the slate that goes live thursday mornings uh, DFS Values, which is also written by me, live Friday mornings. And then Scott Barrett's big DFS breakdown, which is sort of all of our thoughts combined into one piece. That comes out Saturday morning. And of course, Cashing Points, free on YouTube now, uh, Friday evenings, 7 p.m. Eastern time. The best possible look you can get at any DFS slate. We go through everything you could need to know, cash, tournaments, whatever. We cover it. We've got all the news by then, so it's not like the early look where we're guessing about injuries. We know everything we need to know, and we're just telling you guys the best plays. Right, and of course, if you're on FantasyPoints.com and you're not using the DFS Optimizer, you can head to Cashing Points on Friday. We're going to bring it up for you, show you how it works, give you a look into it, and see why it is one of the most powerful tools that FantasyPoints.com provides. Everyone, this has been the DFS Early Look for Week 15. Tap in here next week for Week 16. We'll rebring you the earliest look that you can possibly have at the DFS Slate with myself and Jake Tribby. Good night. We'll see you next week.